Zombies rising from their graves! It's a sight usually reserved for horror movies. But what if those undead killers were real and so small that with the naked eye they couldn't be seen? Nor stopped. Frozen deep in the ice of the Arctic. There may exist zombie viruses waiting to be set free to wreak havoc. So, what happens when the ice melts? And they are unleashed unto our world. This is permafrost. It is essentially the frozen ground beneath the ground. Found in parts of the world where the ground does not completely thaw out no matter the season. The ice under the layers of dirt holds everything from soil to long dead animal carcasses in place. Sounds relatively chill, right? Well, within the permafrost, there are some things that are not quite alive, yet not quite dead either. Down here, there is no oxygen, and no light penetration, allowing anything frozen inside the permafrost to sleep peacefully and undisturbed for potentially thousands of years. Permafrost acts as one giant freezer, and opening it could be like opening Pandora's box. Oh, and when we're talking about thousands of years, that number is no exaggeration. Researchers recently examined samples taken from permafrost to see whether there were any viruses present that could survive the thawing process. Among those microbial monsters brought back from the dead was a 48,000-year-old virus that once defrosted under controlled conditions proved itself capable of infecting an amoeba in the present day. The last time this particular virus was alive and above ground, it did so at a time when Neanderthals still walked the Earth. This virus went to sleep, had itself one long lion. And luckily for us, when it was revived in the present, it was found to not be capable of infecting humans. Sounds about as dangerous as defrosting meat from your own freezer, right? Not exactly. When scientists examined all of the viruses found in their permafrost research, they found 33 different groups of viruses present. Of that 33, 28 were previously unknown. With viruses buried and presumed dead for centuries, many have dubbed these viruses zombie viruses. And though this name is attributed to the idea that long-dead microorganisms are being brought back to life with the thawing of the permafrost, we can't help but wonder, just how devastating could some of these viruses and bacteria actually be if they were allowed to run riot on our planet today? Could the melting of the ice give way to a virus that causes zombies to walk the Earth? Could we find ourselves living through a pandemic, the likes of which we've only ever seen in a horror movie or a video game? If a virus previously unknown to us were to defrost and declare war against mankind, that could really be the last of us. But you don't need to go grabbing your crossbow just yet. Nor do you need to start stocking up on canned food. The viruses locked away for thousands of years in the ice have one major disadvantage when it comes to taking on humanity. The last time many of them were above ground enjoying the warmth of our planet, they were doing so with a much smaller population of humans inhabiting the Earth. A few humans here and there would leave the viruses little motivation to evolve to attack humans. This is something necessary for one of these viruses to be able to wipe us out. These viruses ultimately have the goal of multiplying, and they do so using a host. If there weren't many humans around to play Mater D, there wasn't much reason for those ancient viruses to make us their targets. While one virus may not be out to get us, this doesn't speak for everything frozen underground. Scientists actually know disturbingly little about the viruses lurking beneath the icy surface. Those 28 new viruses found in the permafrost were just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Researchers believe we haven't even gotten close to sampling the majority of viruses frozen in time within the permafrost. But as troublesome as that may be, 
let us disregard the unknown for just a moment. Because some of the dangers down below are actually ones we are well acquainted with. We simply, and possibly mistakenly, now hold them as a thing of the past. A recent incident proves that not all that is buried is truly dead. In 2016, a disease outbreak took a terrifying hold over a village in Siberia. A mystery virus put 90 people in the hospital and took the life of a 12-year-old boy. Families were evacuated and quarantined. Doctors quickly discovered the culprit of the chaos, the Siberian Plague, also known as anthrax. But hold on a second. Anthrax was last seen in the area way back in 1941. So, how did a deadly virus spread throughout a remote village after a 75-year slumber? Well, anthrax is not typically spread via human-to-human -human contact. Instead, the theory is that this anthrax outbreak was started by a reindeer, with over 2,000 of Santa's sleigh pullers infected in the area. You'd think finding the one animal responsible would be impossible. Except, scientists believe the outbreak started with a single infected reindeer. One that, prior to these events, had been sealed stiff in the permafrost for decades. Thawed out, and with that, released the devastating anthrax virus back into the area. This doesn't mean we should be blaming the reindeer. No, we can point the finger at the real culprit. A heat wave. This is where the sobering reality of climate change comes into play. The Arctic is warming up to four times as fast as anywhere else on Earth. And with a rise in temperature that rapid, the ice stands, well, about as much chance as an ice cube in the oven. To make this all the more unsettling, Russian researchers believe that contained deep within the permafrost, there may be as many as 1.5 million anthrax-infected reindeer carcasses. We've already touched on herds of zombies stumbling through horror cinema, but this herd buried deep in the Siberian ice is just as scary. Scientists also speculate that the bubonic plague could be frozen inside the permafrost. The bubonic plague pandemic, known as the Black Death, wiped out up to 200 million people during the 14th century. Though cases of infection still exist today, we have treatment and a much better understanding of the disease. Things get extra uncomfortable when you realize that within the permafrost, there could exist something capable of having a similarly devastating effect on humans today. Just imagine that a virus capable of annihilating our species exists, and is currently being kept on ice as we speak, quite literally. By the time anyone discovered what it was, it would likely be too late. If we look at the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic across the globe, we see how quickly a virus can spread when we have no available treatment for it. Imagine the permafrost melting in Siberia and unleashing something with a similar ability to jump from human to human, yet with a far more debilitating effect. Thanks to scientific research, we know this is now a very real possibility. That doesn't mean we're all passengers on a runaway train headed towards an apocalypse with no chance to change course. But it does mean that, without action, the chance of a zombie virus climbing up from its frozen grave increases. And so, the only viable defense against a possible global disaster is to keep the permafrost, as its name suggests, permanently frozen. Climate change is pushing us toward an increasingly unpredictable future. The clock is ticking. But for now, we can count ourselves lucky that many of these viruses remain frozen in time.